Hello again, working through the book of Revelation, reading together, not only reading, but seeking understanding. We learned last time in chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, that the book is understandable. There's a blessing pronounced on those who read, those who hear, those who keep what is written. Impossible to keep what's written. We don't understand it. Just a quick review as to what we covered last time. Chapter 1, an introduction leading into seven letters, then a scene in heaven, and seven seals. The seventh seal leads to seven trumpets. That really is a summary of the first half of the book. So now we read in more detail, seeking understanding. Again, in the first three verses of the book, we learn that this is a revelation. It is, if you will, an apocalypse. That means we're expecting symbols. There are some timing declarations. These things must come to pass quickly. They must soon take place. The time is near, the text says in verse 3. And we learned that the word testimony and the word witness and the word martyr all come from the same Greek word. So we have an understanding. This is a witness, a testimony of Jesus Christ, about Jesus Christ, and this testimony, this word, this witness is also the witness of the word of God, and John will be a witness because he will write down what he sees. When we come to our reading today, beginning in verse 4, John to the seven churches that are in Asia, we have the beginning of a typical letter form with the greetings, and we expect a word of doxology or praise. That's exactly what we have. Remember that this is a description, a word of praise to God, the one who was and is to come, the one who uh, exists, seven spirits, and Jesus Christ. And notice in verse 5 the description of Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, firstborn from the dead and ruler of kings of earth. That will become very significant later in the book. Don't have to make any decisions now. Just noticing Jesus is already described as ruler of the kings of earth. He's already described as faithful witness, already described as resurrected, firstborn from the dead. So there is a word of doxology to the one who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood to make us priests to his God and Father, glory and dominion forever and ever. I think we need to be cautious lest we are tempted to read Revelation like we read the rest of the New Testament, thinking that here we have great doctrinal statements. We would expect what's said in the book of Revelation to be consistent with other teachings of the New Testament, but we're not primarily reading a book of doctrine. And then in verse 8, we have the statement from the Lord God, I am the Alpha and the Omega, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty, which leads us into a description of the circumstances of John's writing of the book of Revelation. I, your brother and partner in tribulation, that's an important word we're going to come back to, whether it's translated affliction, tribulation, trouble, problem. Here we have in the ESV, tribulation, your brother and partner in tribulation, and the kingdom and patient endurance in Christ. And so we have the account of the testimony or the word of God and of Jesus Christ. So once again, this word witness, this idea that John is called to be a witness of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. As John was in the spirit on the Lord's day, that probably is a reference to Sunday, that would be common, he hears behind him a trumpet and then he turns and sees a voice. He hears uh, a loud voice like a trumpet, verse 10, and he turns and sees the voice. So there is something unusual, a hearing-seeing sequence. This vision that John is going to describe will introduce the seven letters. And we not only want to note that, but to see that this Son of Man, we have a symbol. Uh, we have a vision. We have something very, very outstanding, impressive, glorious. 
and almost without exception, an understanding that John is hearing and then seeing in this vision, the one speaking to him like a son of man, verse 13, and almost again without exception, a reference to a vision of Jesus Christ. Verse 17, I saw him and fell at his feet. He laid his right hand on me. I am the first and the last, the living one. I died and am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and the grave, or Hades. Ought not to read Hades as eternal resting place. That is sometimes translated as hell. But we see here simply translation from the Old Testament, Sheol. And this is simply one way of describing the grave. So, Jesus has the keys to death and Hades, death and the grave, and that would be consistent with something we read in Matthew chapter 16. And then finally, there's a timing statement in verse 19, right? Therefore, the things you've seen, John called to be a witness again, we've already seen that, those that are and those that will take place after this. Don't have to make any decisions right now. Some people see this as past, present, future. It's also possible to read it as write the things you've seen. There are two kinds of things you've seen, things that are and things that will take place after this. And so the mystery of the seven stars is described, the seven golden lampstands. We don't have to doubt about those symbols. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven lampstands are the seven churches. So if we come to application just quickly to think about, well, what does this mean to us today? How can we receive a blessing by reading, by understanding, hearing this word, and keeping what is written? I'm very impressed with Jesus' words, the description that he gives of himself when he says, I am the first and the last. Reminds us of verse 8, the Alpha and the Omega. I am the one who lives even though I die. I am the living one, I died, I am alive forevermore. And I see in that a promise. I see for us hope. The one who has the keys to death, the one who has the keys to the grave. And I anticipate that in the book of Revelation, some of the encouragement that I'll receive is simply an encouragement to realize that Jesus controls life beyond this life. He's already demonstrated that in his own life. Well, may you be blessed as you read chapter 1, verses 4 through 20. See you next time around as we continue our reading with understanding in Revelation chapter 2. God bless.